previously on We Teach. Today in health class, we've been covering the six essential nutrients. We're gonna go out to the Renegade Cafe, which is our concession stand, and the health students will come out there. We're gonna cook some chocolate chip, granola, banana, pancakes. So that's what's on the menu this morning. Bananas, get your uh, extra potassium. We're gonna put something together for them so they can see that this isn't that difficult to do, and that they can eat well and, 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 and not spend you know, hours preparing for something like this. Good job, thanks for your help. How'd you do? Not good. How much did you lose? How much did you pay in fees and commissions for your trades? $1,500. You paid $2,000? $2,000. We're negative 26. Okay, so remember the other day when I told you there was a strong possibility that you would pay a lot of money for your exchanges. That's what I want you to look at when you look at your portfolio. The personal finance class is made up of all different uh, grade levels. Today, we're actually going to uh, look at our investments. We play the stock market game, which is directly linked to the stock market. So with this uh, type of you know, virtual activity, the students will learn exactly how their decisions or their research or lack of impact the decisions they make and the money that they'll have if they choose to invest that way. Work with your partner and decide if you're going to do any more trading today. Don't just make a decision if you're the one on the computer. I want you to talk about it. Zach, your foreman. Ten, 15 minutes before the end of second period. Mike, give us stone place, give him that. Assign jobs. It's your job to get the shop cleaned up. We set up in groups. I let them pick their group. If they work together and progress accordingly, I'll let them stay that way for the whole year. Now we're working on lawnmower engines. So now they'll strip down a lawnmower engine all the way down to bare metal and hone it and then do the specs and then put it back together and we'll see if it runs. In order to really make this lesson fun, I'm going to have a crystal ball and a fortune teller's hat. So I intend to darken the classroom, have the kids put their heads down on the desk, and when they open their eyes, I will be the Swami. <gasps> Assist De Assist Morgan. De Morgan. Ah, De Morgan. Morgan wird nächstes Jahr cheerleading machen. It actually ties in with what I think about language learning, that if it isn't fun, if communication isn't fun, why do it? School communities have a lot of different needs. Sometimes it's clothing, sometimes it's finances, sometimes it's food. So at Seneca here we have a food bank. Uh, and today during my lunch period I'll be picking up a couple bags which will be dropped off after school today uh, to the home. Um, and this happens once a week, uh, sometimes every other week depending on which family needs what. And there's different teachers here that participate in this and I happen to be one of them. Well, today's uh, German 4 class is Reading, Writing, Speaking Workshop. And I love this class. Uh, it's a great group of kids. Um, German 4 is really the pinnacle of what we do in our language, in German language program. Uh, this activity today is something that asks the kids to read, to speak, to write in the target language. One of the highlights of workshop for the kids is food. Uh, I find that food relaxes kids and it really puts them in a good mood and in, in the frame of mind to talk with each other and uh, so it has to happen very quickly that they know that they line up at the beginning of the uh, 
time period and they get their food and they sit down and I think it makes it more conducive to listening to their classmates and it's, it's more of a community so that's why food is part of it. My entire family loves the Temple Owls because my mom is a professor there. Uh, one student is going to present and he is going to speak about topics that are of interest to him. And uh, in order to keep him focused, he has a brown paper bag that he has covered with lots of categories that are important to him. He will speak for three to five minutes. The other students will listen and they will ask questions about his presentation. So that tells me if they are listening, paying attention, if his speech is interesting. So that's kind of a monitor of how he's doing with his speech. First I have a photo of me and my mom. We are at the 2008 World Series in Tampa, Florida. My mom is very sweet and I love her a lot. And we both love the Philadelphia Phillies and that's why we flew to Tampa, Florida. Next I have a group of postcards and here is one from the Blue Man Group. I saw them in 2009 in Las Vegas. And also from last summer, I have a ticket from a Houston Astros game. In my bag, I have my old passport. And finally, I have a baseball autographed by the well-known and beloved Phillies announcer, Harry Callis. He was my favorite, and he's very nice, and it's very sad that he has died. I think that is all. Okay, so Verhat. Okay, so who has questions for Jake? Mike? That's an old group, isn't it? They've been doing it for years. Is that always the same group? I think they have more group members. Okay. Jake, do. Jake, that was really, really fantastic. After the kids ask him questions, then they will break up into individual groups. They get to choose their own groups, and they get to choose the topic that they wish to speak about. For the last seven minutes or so, they'll write about what the topic of their conversation was. And uh, this kind of brings it full circle. So there will have been reading, writing, and speaking. Has anybody heard from a college? Hmm. How would I say that? In this context, I've applied to Ohio State. Ooh, fantastic. And are you happy with this decision? Katie, that's fantastic. When did you find out? Accepted. Oh, ah, but you have to. Ah. Ah, Ryan geschickt. Ryan geschickt. You sent your money in. Is that a good feeling? You know, it's over, and now I can relax. Nice, really nice. So Liebe Michelle, was that? And so, dear Michelle, what do you say to that? You've made the decision. I congratulate you. That's fantastic. Are you happy? Wonderful. So you're in, you're in the vicinity, in Maryland. And maybe Maryland, Katie, Pennsylvania, Ohio. So how far is Ohio State from Penn State? Not bad. So maybe for a weekend. I think that as a language teacher and as a German teacher, I have a unique perspective because I'm lucky in that I get to see the kids grow from their little freshman tadpole stages up to the beautiful swan stage of senior year. And uh, it makes my job so delightful because I know that everything they've learned, for better or for worse, uh, they learned from me and hopefully it's for better. 
and I just get to see their growth, not only as language students, but as uh, men and women, and that is really uh, the pinnacle for me. At Seneca High School, business teacher Grace McCloskey greets students in her entrepreneurship class and gives them a warm-up exercise that will help demonstrate today's lesson. Okay, so in front of you is eeny, meeny, miny, mo can be a dangerous game. So what I'm expecting you to do right now is to read through this, identify the objectives, and then go through and answer the sample questions, okay? Today, we're gonna go over case studies, and I'm gonna try to relate uh, to students um, different things that are maybe current or maybe in this area as to, to why certain products or services you just can't offer at any time. So we're gonna go over um, markets, demographics, and how you must check and make sure your target market is there before you just sell a product. Somebody tell me, in reading this market research article, what is really, really important before you begin a business? Research. It's a good answer, but be a little more specific. Marketing research. All right, knowing where your target is, knowing what your market looks like. What were you going to say, Kayla? Knowing if you're prepared to actually start a business. Being prepared, right? You can't just run off and start a business. What were some of the concerns uh, in that example one? Right, you don't even know if your market is demanding that product. You don't know if that's something they want yet. During the entrepreneurship class, especially at this phase of the project, uh, I have to go around to each individual student regularly because they're all working on completely different ideas. Uh, and some students are in an industry overview section while other students may be still working on their target market. So I'll be walking around and help them uh, with whichever section of their project they're on. I'm really looking forward to looking at your questions. So yesterday, what did we talk about? Questions on our surveys, right? Or we may have what, Julia? We may not do a survey, we may do what type of instrument? Um, a focus group. We might do a focus group, good. Questionnaire. Questionnaire. Anybody else? Prototype. Prototype, we might create a prototype. And I'd like to see your objective. I'd like to see the profile that you created, and you're gonna start, if you haven't already, creating your questions. Now take out that yellow packet from yesterday, because that gives you sample questions. So what are you doing? You're using your objective to create questions. Questions have to be relative to your, what do your questions have to do? You just ask anything? Help you achieve the information pertaining to your market. Yeah, absolutely. So it should be reverting back to your objective, right? What is the survey for? What, what, do you, what information do you need? What are you trying to find out? So if you're having trouble uh, determining what your profile is, what should you do? Go to your business plan. You've already created the demographic section. Uh, psychographic and the geographic section for your business plan. That's your profile. That's what your uh, target market looks like. How's yours look? Okay, so the objective is improve your performance in a number of areas. Okay, yeah, you're right. Pretty vague, right? What do you want to improve? Think about it. What's your product? Shoes. Shoes, right? But they're special shoes, right? Yeah. They're move removable, right? Okay, so you already have this idea of what your target market looks like. So now, what questions do you want to ask of them to find out if, number one, are you going to be profitable with this? So a question might be, what range of price are you willing to pay? What sports are you involved in? Because that sole, yes, yes. How often do you purchase? Do you purchase different shoes for each? Okay, so now you got questions. So what are you really trying to find out? The, like, this, uh, which I'm gonna think. Okay, let me think for you. It's okay. All those questions for me would tell me 
is the target market I chose the correct market? Because you're asking them all these questions to really determine if they are gonna buy your product, okay? We know it's measurable. We know there's a lot of people out here that are buying cleats and, and different types of shoes for the kids. We know that, okay? So now we wanna know if they're gonna buy yours. Okay, so put that in your objective. That's what you're, you're looking for, looking to answer. That's a good question. Do your questions have to be multiple choice? No. No, but what does multiple choice do for you as a researcher? Give you a better idea of Right, because now you can categorize your answers. You can, if you leave your, your answers open-ended and people get to say whatever they want, what's gonna happen? But what you could do is multiple choice and then please Any comments, please explain. Okay, sound good? I'm the advisor for the Knowledge Bowl team and kids who are on Knowledge Bowl are kids who are really interested in trivia. We need kids in all different kinds of categories, so we have certain kids who are really good in sports, certain kids who love literature, certain kids who are good in history or math or science. So they try out for the team and we always get a lot of kids to try out. We actually make cuts. Uh, they take it very seriously, having fun. We go to different schools to compete in a Jeopardy style format. I think every, every child in our school needs a niche and these kids are really interested in academics and they, they deserve to be showcased and, and that's why I'm so happy to be their advisor. Today we're going to Allentown High School for the Allentown Tournament. We're going today into round three and then also the quarterfinals. We've had a great year so far. Uh, lots of trophies, lots of fun. Now all we need is a bus and we'll, we'll be good. Now that bus was 15 minutes early last week, right? Whoa, did we check this one? I'm getting a little nervous. I know they will be here, but I'm just gonna go in to double check that they're on their way. Uh, they're very good about being on time, so I'll just double check, because uh, we really have to be there at three o'clock. We don't want to forfeit, and we don't want to hold up the tournament. Can we check, Chris, to see if our Knowledge Bowl bus is coming? Is there any way to check? Absolutely. I just want to, I don't want to be late. <laughs> what time did you have it coming? Right now. But they were like 15 minutes late, I mean 15 minutes early last week, so I just want to make sure. I know Brian ordered it, and we, we're um, riding with Cherokee. So maybe they were just a little late. In the meantime, they're probably pulling up, but I always like to double check just. All right, thanks so much. Awesome, thank you, Chris. Bye, Candace. They should be here. Mo they should be here momentarily. All right. So let's all be nice when we get on the bus. That's probably it. With the bus arriving right on schedule, Marianne and her Lenape students join their colleagues from Cherokee for the 40-minute ride to Allentown High School. At Cherokee, the end of the school day inevitably means a very crowded senior parking lot. After making sure that everyone leaves safely, John Fitzpatrick returns to the automotive classroom to meet with the students in the Cherokee High Racing Association. Our show is the 30th. How many are you going to make it? Show of hands. We have a car show every year. That's, where, that's our biggest fundraiser because the school doesn't pay a nickel for the, for the, the car or the club. Our car show and our pretzel sales at midterms and finals is where we get our money from. And our sponsors. I need them before the 20th. Guys, you can, you can get anybody to sponsor us. It's 150 bucks. They get their name on the shirt. Gradical Racing does all our tune-ups, the real fine tune-ups, for free. Uh, Arizona Design just wrapped our car. The Camaro has gone from a piece of junk all the way to a 10 second car. Now we have a Mustang we just got. We're gonna build that up and take them both down to the track at ACO, who is one of our sponsors, who has helped us out a lot over the years. 
Should we try another burnout? All right, somebody grab the water can. Think about what kind of project you want to do. A go-kart? You want to build a go-kart? But I, what I want you to do is research it, okay? Find me some plans for a go-kart from building it from scratch. Or if they have a kit, which one's cheaper, okay? Got it? In their next meeting, let's see, two, four, six, seven. All right, you two work together. You two work together, you three work together, okay? I want three plans for next week. Group one, group two, group three. Fill in the, print it so it's nice and neat, so that I know what group you're in. So let's get that back straight. Straight. Okay, we gotta figure out why it's not, it's, it's bowing. It's just a matter of cutting it. You know, make it so that there's no bow and that it fits right in that piece right there. Where do you need to sit? Right at the end of here? Well, wherever you decide. If it, it's going to sit right there, right. give me a measurement from this wall, from the, wall? Okay. From the, in, in the fender okay. to that fender, and I'll go get a piece or something like this. Okay. I mean, the tape measure's right there. Uh, Where's that at? If I can get something that's that thin instead of that wide, that would he will that work? It should, because it's just holding this up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just holding that up. Okay. While the CHRA works on the Mustang, Lenape's academic teams have arrived at Allentown High School and are going over strategy prior to their first match. I, I think that's a good suggestion. Um, yeah, Anna's suggestion was if you guys start for high points like you normally do, but you find you're not getting them, then start going for some lower ones to bolster your score. We have three teams. We have two A teams and a B team. The B team is composed uh, only of freshmen and sophomores. They're awesome kids. And then we have our, our regulars, our juniors and seniors, who are really the core of, of the team. They've been with us, most of them, for either two, three, or four years. Right now, Lenape uh, A teams are in third and fourth place. So you guys have a very good shot at getting into quarterfinals. Our first match, we are playing against Shawnee, which is our sister school. So we've played against them before, and it's comfortable. And I'm looking forward to a good match. OK, Mac? Uh, World Cup 25B. World Cup 25B. This team was the only team to beat the championship team, Spain, in the 2010 World Cup. This team was the only team to beat the championship team, Spain, in the 2010 World Cup. Is correct. I love watching the way they work together as a group. I love watching that they have specialties uh, where they all contribute. So watching how they progress as the year goes on uh, is really fun for me. So even though I can't compete, I really get to take part in kind of a, you know, in the background and uh, enjoy what they're doing. This is the name of the player whose goal was announced as, and this is a quote, it was an absolute firecracker. This is the name of the player whose goal was announced as, it was an absolute firecracker. Suarez? Uh, Incorrect. Makeup. No, Giovanni van Bronckhorst. As the competition rolls along, Cherokee industrial arts teacher John Fitzpatrick ties up a few loose ends before heading home. Got to get my stuff together for being absent tomorrow. Back in 2001, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
and it's a cancer of the lymph nodes. And we found it throughout my whole body. We, had, we did a, a biopsy on my, one of my lymph nodes and then we did a bone marrow biopsy and it was in my bone marrow, but I was in remission from 2003 up until this past August. And we found out that in the back of my throat, there's a lymph node that's infected and it has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I've talked to my students about, you know, cancer and two things are most important, early detection and PMA, positive mental attitude. My students have been great in the fact that they stay away from me if they have a cold or, you know, some kind of congestion, anything. Because I told them, you know, I could die from a cold versus cancer. Tonight's game is uh, we're playing Cherokee High School. Cherokee and Shawnee have had a, a great rivalry in, in all sports, but you know especially football. The coaches know each other so well. The players know each other so well. We're sister schools in the district. We have a tremendous amount of respect for them and their program, and, and I know it's mutual. It's also a very important game uh, uh, in, in regard to the Group Four playoffs. Since the, the school day ended, uh, we've been spending time looking over our game plan. Touching base with all the assistant coaches, coaches in the press box, and uh, coaches will be on the field. I'm trying to just get across to them the things that I want them to look for so we can put our players in the best chance uh, to be successful. I mean, the way we've been practicing is their nine technique to the field has been walked away. Mm -hmm. That's what we saw. They so, we want, so we want to run zone to that. If we have loose to the field and it's on the left, we can run Arizona or Denver. I think that'll help tonight. Running more Denver and Broncos because the back's on the same side. We run a no huddle offense and you know, we like to line up quick, try to see what the defense is doing and then get the best play call in as possible. We got to tell our guys tonight, if, like, if we're going to stay in a formation, we signal loose. They have to get lined up fast. Like right. the kids got to line up fast. Get lined up. You know, it's so like- they can get lined up and then they can adjust their split. Basically. True. Right. It'll, it'll just help our play call a little bit. You know, don't be afraid to make a suggestion. Don't be afraid to write something down, say, hey, let's come back to this next play or, you know, something like that. I mean, we've been doing a better job this year, you know, continuing with concepts that have been working. But I, I don't want to, I want to make sure a game like tonight will be important to come back to good things. Cherokee runs the ball extremely well. Uh, they have a great offensive line. They have some outstanding backs. And uh, that'll be a challenge. You know, we're really looking forward to a great contest tonight. I'm sure it'll be an exciting game for both teams. At Allentown High School, despite losing to Shawnee in their first match of the day, both the Lenape A1 and A2 teams have advanced to the quarterfinal round of the tournament. The A2 team will have a chance for redemption as they draw Shawnee once again, while Marianne joins the A1 team as they take on Woodbridge in what turns out to be a rather impressive display of trivia knowledge. Albuquerque? He's correct. A recreational vehicle? That's right, yeah. Chemistry? He's correct. Cerebral palsy? Kenya? New Mexico? Yes. Tazo? He's correct. River outflow 25B, the Rhine River, the Rhine River. North Sea? North Sea is correct. That was absolutely incredibly awesome. I'm like absolutely blown away. I think, yes you did. I think that is the first, I can't remember a time when our team ever scored 1,500 points at a match. I'm racking my brain and I really can't remember a time in all the years that I've coached that a team has scored 1,500, I think it was 1,550 points. They did an awesome job. It was fantastic, you guys were great. It was really fun watching that. I mean, it was the, the answers were flying. And I just think um, kids need to know when they do well. They know already when they don't do well. Okay, so um, 
We go home today and then we come back next week for the semifinals. Awesome! It's the end of the day and we are going home happy campers. The A2 team defeated Shawnee. They kind of redeemed themselves, so they're moving on next week. And our A1 team is also moving on next week as part of the Final Four. And uh, if all goes well, both teams will progress to the finals and we'll have a Lenape-Lenape match. You know, I've been trying to preach this to you all week, and I think as the week wore on, what I could see out of you was a lot of confidence. And that's how you have to play, with confidence. Well, look, these guys are pretty good. You know, like I always say, they practice just as hard as we do. They have good coaches. They have good players, all right? You ought to be thankful, I know I am, to be in a game like this, all right? You know, we always said you want to play a meaningful game. Got a lot of people here tonight. What a great atmosphere to be in tonight. All right, so just enjoy it. Play hard for each other. All right, that's all we ever ask. Nothing more, nothing less. perfect world, I'm going to be calm and reserved. That way I can kind of think through all the game situations. And I can't say it was always like that. We're most effective when I can just stand and watch. Watch what the other team's doing and then help the defensive coaches make some uh, adjustments. So the chess match on game night is pretty interesting. And uh, I've found that over the years, uh, the calmer I stay, uh, the better I am. And that's, that's not always easy. Just about ready to kick off the ball now. I want to go loose. I want to go loose first play. Get two receivers, Zach and Eric. Here comes the kick. It's a short kick right around the 20-yard line. Field by Sean Murray. He's going to go to the left side. And he's taken out of bounds around the 35-yard line. All right, all right, all right, all right, here we go. Loose. All right. We're either going to go... We're either going to go Bobcat West Brandon or Denver. Brown. All right, I'll tell you. Hey, you look at me. Renegades moving the ball early on. I think they're really catching the Cherokee defense off guard with as they keep hurrying up this uh, snap. And it's going to be a false start. Go loose. Loose. Hey, hey. We're changing. Loose launch. Oakland. Loose launch open. I got loose launch open. Got another penalty. Well, what do you got? What are they doing? We can get in a stance. Let's go. Run the play. Jamie Jackman. He's going to take it. And he's going to run. He's looking for room to run. He runs to the left, decides to pass it, and it's caught inbounds by McHale. Good job, Jame. Hey, hey, good catch. Good job. Despite the catch, Shawnee falls short of the first down. And on the ensuing possession, Chiefs running back Zaire Williams goes to work on Cherokee's ground attack. Here come the Chiefs with Zaire Williams in the backfield. They're going to fake it to him. Pitch it to the left. Zaire Williams in the open field. No one can bring him down. He's going across the 50. He's got one guy to beat, and he's not going to catch him. Zaire Williams will walk into the end zone. This is pretty painful. I, I didn't anticipate this. I, I thought we'd at least got to slow him down a little bit. Now trailing 7-0, Shawnee continues to make mistakes on both sides of the ball. It's like the same personnel they had out there the last time they threw. And here's another offensive false start. 
So that's going to make third and even longer for the Renegades. So that's the third false start for this offensive line of the Renegades. I'm here. I'm here. Yo, offense, kid. Can, can you guys stop beating ourselves? Can we do that? We're beating ourselves. Relax. I'm a pretty emotional person. I coach with a lot of emotion. But game night is a time to stay calm and keep the players calm and not get them overexcited. After a lackluster first quarter, the Renegades look to turn things around in the second. It looks like they're gonna try and go right up the middle. And that's what they do to Diorio. And it's close. It's gonna be an official timeout as they bring out the change to measure this one. Team, get ready. Team, get ready. I'll, 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 I will go for it. And they've got the first down. I want loose. 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 All right, here we go. Hey, go Syracuse. Syracuse. Here they come in the spread offense. They take the snap. Quick throw, but he looks deep. He's got McHale, and it's caught for the Renegade touchdown. Zach McHale. Oh, it's blue. Damn. Tony, bro. Tony, touchdown pass by the Hey, good job. Good job, babe. Good job. Come on. All right, all right. And let's see if the Renegades can tie it up. Let's make this. The kick. And it's good. It's good. So we have a tie game here. All right, let's just settle down. Let's go. Get long enough. I know. I know. I know. Although able to tie the game at seven, Shawnee is still unable to contain Cherokee's running game. And on the next possession, the Chiefs take back the lead. Renegades defense stacking in the box. They hand it to Zaire. He jumps, and he's in for the Cherokee Chief touchdown. Touchdown, Put the Cherokee Chiefs up by seven. It's a nice kick, and it's good. With that touchdown, Cherokee takes a 14-7 lead into halftime. Tonight is our Babes Kids Dodgeball Tournament. Uh, the Dodgeball Tournament is a fundraising activity for uh, a charitable organization, and Babes Kids was specifically designed to help children with um, severe medical needs. And what I'm gonna start doing now is going to the gym, making sure that the Canuso Foundation and the 12th Man Club are starting to tape down the court. I'll make sure that the students are all prepared at the entrance so that they can start receiving people and setting up the team. Do you think you're gonna need me to make more tokens? Hi, this is a no. token for your district. All right. Guys! Only the captain needs to sign you in. The rest of you grab a place on the bleacher so you don't lose a spot. We have to go in and check, make sure the music is ready, the microphones. Um, our MC tonight is Mr. Glossner, so I have to make sure he's prepared. So when you address the students, you know, get them, say, are we ready to get started? Do you know the rules? No arguing with the refs. We have people coming into the stands and they're paying a dollar, which the donation goes directly to Babe's Kids. And we also have a group that will be selling water and uh, pretzels to try and raise extra money. There's little trash cans over there on that table. You're going to go through the stands and you're going to ask people if they would like to donate their change also to the cause. Okay, so I, they're right over there on the other side of the pretzels. Go around now. We'll just grab it. No, 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 you don't have to go around now. Just once everything gets started. We'll set the teams up on one side and then I'll have to go back and forth and make sure that everybody in the audience knows that it's dangerous and they must pay attention to the dodgeball game. Keep in mind that those balls come across here fast. Keep in mind that those dodgeballs come quick. Pay attention. Especially the teenagers who want to text during the dodgeball tournament. They need to, to be aware that the dodgeballs are going to come flying in their direction. At Shawnee, halftime is an opportunity for Tim and his coaching staff to try and find solutions to the problems the team had in the first half. 
Let's hope we do a little better in this half. But the third quarter turns out to be more of the same. Here comes the kick. It's a very nice kick deep. It's fielded around the five yard line. He's going to go right up field. Cuts it to the right side. He's got down. open field. He goes around the 30 yard line. And he's fumbled, uh, but he fumbles out of bounds. We are not very good at kickoff coverage. Oh boy. Right next to West Hoffman in the middle. Here comes the pitch to Zaire around the outside. He cuts it up the middle. He's got room. And he's taken down. The, where are the linebackers? Oh boy. They're so slow reacting anyway. Here come the Chiefs. They're going to hand it off to Filet up the middle. He cuts it to the left side, and he's going to have the Cherokee Chief first down. Nice running by the two running backs for the Cherokee Chiefs. Well, what's the answer? I mean, we, we, don't, we don't have a whole lot of other answers. Well, There's a pass down. Come on, Anthony, read the tight end. Zaire Williams once again in eye formation. They're going to give it to him. Tackle. Oh, Wes Hall he missed the tackle. out of the backfield. Wes Alfner, the leading tackler for this Renegade defense. And here come Chiefs. Midline. It's a fake Counter option. option. And Zaire Williams goes right up the middle. Dylan Coho almost had his fingertips on that ball. It was see, really Mitch, Mitch should be right there on that. I mean, I know he didn't see the play, but they, they, Mitch should be there for the pitch. I mean. The eye formation. Sneak. They're going to go right up the middle with the quarterback sneak on fourth and short, and I don't think they have. Despite their struggles against the run, Shawnee is able to hold Cherokee on fourth and one and take over on downs. But with the clock ticking, it becomes critical for the Renegades to manufacture some offense of their own. Come here, come here. We have two plays to get this. All right. All right, yeah, let's, we got to get this. Spread left, all right, spread left, zipper, Titans. Everybody's clear what we're doing. No penalties. And we got to snap the ball soon, like in, in a normal situation, because they're not ready, and we're waiting for them to get ready. All right? All right, let's get in the huddle. Go get in the huddle and get it done. Let's go. There's number 14, Eric Spires. They send Jake Dean in motion to the right. It's going to be a toss to Diorio. Not much running room. He tries to find as much as possible, but it looks like he's taken down in the backfield. With 11 minutes and 34 seconds left in this game. I want a timeout. Timeout. Stay there. What's three points going to do for us if we can't stop? I mean, I know we need two scores. It's, it's the psyche of the game. Put the pressure on them. Put the pressure on them. We, hey, we're going to stop. We win. All right. We can make it. Uh, we got it? Uh, let's go. Field goal. Field goal. All right, we're going to field goal. Let's go field goal. About a 31-yard field goal. Here it is. The kick. Looks like a nice kick. And it is a good, good kick good. by the junior, Vince White. Good job. Hey, good job getting it down. Good job. Now only trailing by four the Renegade defense is able to force the Chiefs to punt, giving Shawnee an opportunity to take their first lead of the game. Here come the Renegades again. They're going to pitch it to Rob Diorio. He's going upfield, and he's in for the Renegades touchdown. One. Good job, good job. Come on, let's go, kid. Hey, we got to get blocks on the edge. I know you weren't in there. Right, good job. Good job. Get some water. Great job, Robbie. Here's the kick. Yes. And it's good. With less than three minutes remaining and Shawnee in front, Cherokee has one more chance to take back the lead. It's a pass! It's a pass! Here comes the pass. They look deep. He's got a man. And it's caught by the Chiefs. And it's a Chief touchdown with two minutes and 40 seconds left. With Cherokee back on top, Shawnee must convert on fourth down to keep their hopes alive. Well, we can do this, so we can do it. Come on. Fourth and four, and this will be the game for the Renegades. 
spread offense. We'll see what they decide to do. They're going to run the speed option. He goes right up the middle, and he stops short, and the Cherokee Chiefs stop Jamie Jackpin on the quarterback draw. The Cherokee Chiefs, 21, the Shawnee Renegades, 17. That's your final score. Good job, guys. Good job, Mike. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job, Ryan. Good job, guys. Good luck. Whether we win or we lose, we're a team. Is that clear? Okay, that's that's all really needs to be said. Okay, all right. Didn't turn out the way we wanted to tonight. All right. There's no point in me uh, trying to cite anything right now. Okay. Needless to say, hey, they made some plays. They made a few more than we did. But last time we played, we made a few more plays than Cherry Hill East. It's that simple. Okay. We're to be here at 8:30 tomorrow morning. Now, we were coming in no matter what. Is that clear? All right, so I'm just letting you know. And I don't want to hear any excuses. I don't want any excuses. Is that clear? I don't have to make a decision I don't want to make. You need to go home, get some rest. I need to know if anybody is seriously hurt. Okay, let's go. Lenny, let's go. Breakdowns, get out of here. Come on. Turn in, boys. Go blue on two. One, two. Go blue. It's a very, very uh, exciting time because the students that participate are from all walks of life at Seneca. We have students participating tonight that maybe never played a sport ever. And we have students that are into all the sports. We have students that just came out because it's a good cause and that's the kind of kids we hear, have here at Seneca. And they have their, you know, their headbands on and they paint their faces and they all really get involved and, and get into this whole night. We're seeing some matchups against each other that you know, just it's, it worries you a little bit. Oh, this is not good. We had um, a group tonight that most of them actually are freshmen or sophomores in my class and they're all girls and they had these black outfits on with these pink bows and they were matched up against one of our more aggressive, competitive male teams. But the kids are all good to each other. It's a lot of fun, there's a lot of competition, and um, it, it can be a little intense, but in the end, um, everybody knows that they're here for one reason, and that is to help someone in this community. Teaching is about winning, not just by answering the most questions or scoring the most points, but by being a role model and earning the trust and respect of students. When teachers lead by example, and make the lives of those around them better, everyone becomes a winner.